Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethiroth, and today we are continuing our Fenderix deep dive into Fenderix spells. Uh, we have a fun little gem to go over today because today we get into blood magic. This is a great little, they, they've done a lot more than just, in vanilla Skyrim you had the vampiric drain ability and that was pretty much it. You know, you get some damage, some lifesteal, which is nice and very thematic for a vampire, don't get me wrong. But if you expand on blood magic with some of these spells and add them to your vampire, you get not only more damage, but some interesting combinations. Uh, one of the things to note about blood magic is in almost every instance, it will trigger what is known as the bleeding state, which actually does damage to you. So you will, you will take damage. Uh, yeah, you will be bleeding after you cast it. And then if you cast it again and you still have a bleeding effect, it will do more damage. So this is one of those types of spells that does a lot of damage, bordering on overpowered, but it costs you health, so that's how it makes up for it. Now the first thing we're going to look at is a spell called Blood Seep, which causes a target to take 18 damage at close or long distance. Caster begins bleeding for 8 seconds. If the caster is bleeding already, the caster then takes 20 damage. Otherwise, the caster takes 10 damage. So we're going to go ahead and boot up Immortal Mode. So at least we can't die, but we are going to keep an eye on that health bar just to give us an idea of how quickly you're going to run out of health. Uh, we've got about 250, so hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, first off, we're going to bring in our lovely assistant. Very charming, our lovely churl. And then, well, they said the spell works at long range, so let's uh, have a look and see what they're definite. Oh, that is definitely long range. That's... Not bad at all, actually. That didn't hurt that much. Let me see. Uh, nope. That, okay. Cool. All right, so minimal amount, although, ooh, that was a, let's see, can I, all right, so we're going to play with this bleeding effect a little bit, and I'm going to try stacking the hits. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, see, so when, if you're repeatedly casting blood magic, the bleeding effect on you will stack and then do more damage. So it's more like the blood magic, it's like it's designed to work side by side with another school of magic. Uh, either restoration to make up for the damage you're doing to yourself, or there's another Fenderic spell that actually works on top of that, which is poison. So we're gonna combine uh, bug beam with the seep spell and see just how well these things do in concert. So first we put on Seep, and then Bug Beam. And he does indeed die faster. Uh, so because bleeding causes a status effect, oh geez, I poisoned myself too. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the poison spells because that, that gas, if you walk into it, can still render you poisoned, which isn't that big a deal unless you've already managed to mark yourself as bleeding and then both you and the other guy will take some extra damage. Oh, come on now. Don't be like that. This is for the demonstration. You knew, you knew what, this, what this was when you signed up for it. I, I hope. <laughs> I don't know that they... I don't know what kind of a process you go through in Oblivion before you are uh, whisked away to the mortal realm. <laughs> Maybe they have a line of ones that are in basically detention. <laughs> the Dremora are just standing there waiting to get whisked away by some kind of summoning spell. Anyway, so that was Seep. That's your basic apprentice level spell. Um, great damage, but it does cause a bleeding effect, and if you have to stack the casting, it will also hurt you, so keep that in mind. Uh, next, we're going to go into... Now, the Adept spells are particularly interesting. So, for example, we have Blood Transfusion. Heals a target by 75. Caster begins bleeding for 8 seconds, and then, obviously, if you're already bleeding, you take more damage. So we're actually going to hurt this guy with some poison, and then do a heal. Or does that only work on... You know what? We're going to try... Where is Lydia? Where is our precious Lydia? One of our Lydias. Wow, I'm going to have to... Okay, now she's not unstuck? Now she's not unstuck? You, you were stuck in that wall for the entire video last time. Seriously. Okay, can I just heal you and make us okay? All right, fine. Whew. Okay, well, that was exciting. There, can we just hurt this guy and then... I don't know if it'll let me... Oh, yes, it does. Okay, 
So it's a good sized heal, like it's 75. So that's more healing than you get from the fast healing spell that you get when you're at apprentice level in restoration, uh, which is really nice. Uh, just keep in mind that you will be hurting yourself over time, so the more you throw out that blood magic, the more damage you do to yourself. And to be frank, if your friends are doing a good enough job of tanking for you, it won't even be that much of an issue. And now we have blood magic sanguine offering. Sacrifice health to conjure a Dramora for 45 seconds. Caster begins bleeding for 8 seconds. And if you're already bleeding, you take more damage. So this is actually our, this will be our next uh, summoning spell. I think our churl is kind of can't decide what he's gonna do, but this should unsummon him. Yep. Oh, okay. So that that looks like a Dramora Lord to me. That is a decent sized Dramora. He is stunned by the Bijan Mod's beauty overhaul of Lydia. She looks so much better now that he just cannot raise his sword against her. <laughs> this is quite an awkward staring contest. Anyway, so, as you can see, we're looking at Daedric armor, Daedric weapons, and he is significantly more powerful than the Churl. I don't know why the Churl's ID is still popping. Maybe we can summon him over here. Make sure Lydia doesn't come over to kill me. Huh, that's a funny little glitch. He's still technically under the, the Churl name, despite not being a Churl. That's funny. Uh, well, hmm. I guess we could do a little experiment real quick and see... Okay, he definitely is not using the Churl stats. <laughs> he doesn't die as fast. So it's just a name issue. He is still all the might and power of a Dramora. So, that's cool. And it costs, what, 75 health? Let's see, Sanguine Offering? 45 health. Oh, it doesn't even say. It just says it's sac you're sacrificing health. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how much. We are at 255... And now we are at 242. Oh, that's, that's paltry. That's what, 13, 13 hit points? 13 hit points to bring out a Dramora death machine. That's not bad. I like that thematically though, that summoning the creatures of greater power requires more of a cost than just Magicka. Uh, giving up your own life blood in order to bring out a more powerful ally is pretty cool thing thematically for me like if you're doing a an evil character playthrough and you wanted someone that was so devoted to revenge that they were willing to hurt themselves to do it or something like that that would work out pretty good in my opinion we should go ahead and switch to the Dramore churl now uh so now we're getting into the good stuff this is our expert level spells this one is called ring of ruin blast a target with blood magic for 97 damage Whew. And then that triggers the casting effect. Uh, it's important to note that in this case, it's doing another five points of damage over what we were getting from these adept level spells. So the more powerful the blood magic, the greater the cost to your health when you cast them again and again and again. So just keep that in mind as well, that that is something that will hurt you if you're not careful. Ooh. That looks cool. I'm pretty sure this is pretty good range as well. Yeah, that is cool. So you're hurting yourself and your target at the same time. Use that wisely. Although for a vampiric playthrough, you could have vampiric drain in the other hand, and then you're just constantly healing yourself while you're bombarding them with blood magic, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, also, if you're running Sacrosanct, there is a side quest there that you get from draining uh, NPCs to death, and that unlocks blood magic as well. So if you combine these two, the blood magic from Sacrosanct is area of effect and damage over time. All right, so you nail them with the spell and for the next like 30 seconds they keep taking damage. So this, is an, this would be an interesting balance between uh, hitting a group with spells that do damage over time and then switching to your heavy hitters that work on single targets. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a nice mix. It's a couple of extra spells. Plus, you know, who wouldn't be terrified by a vampire that can summon frickin' Daedra and then heal them? Like, <laughs> you can create a tank, and you can heal the tank, and you can destroy their tank, all in one school of magic. What more do you want? I love modded Skyrim. Alright, that brings us to Hemorrhage, which I hope is better than Ring of Ruin, because it just sounds terrible. Alright, Barrage an enemy with blood magic for 75 damage per second. Oh no, is this going to be a Ring of Ruin machine gun? 
Oh, I, I bet. Let's see. We're gonna go over here to the uh, to the E the the uh, Magica recovering station. Sorry, Lydia. This is for science. Okay. So no, not the Ring of Ruin on repeat, but definitely destructive. Ooh, oh wow! I can use my, I can I can perform an Arcaeus rite and put her soul to rest. <laughs> Modding does some weird stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, that is that is new. Summon interaction menu. What does that do? Huh. I have not seen that before. Cool. That's new. All right. So that being said, let's whip out our lovely little churl. All right. So that was Hemorrhage, which I love the the graphics for that. Does it just looks like the, the the vital fluids of the body are being forced out in a very brutal and violent manner. Which is about what I would expect of a spell titled Hemorrhage. Whew. Okay, alright. Now, last but not least, we have the master level spells. Next is Ravager. Drain, 37 health per second. I was wondering when we were going to get to some lifesteal. Wait, is that a mana cost of zero... Seriously? Z zero. Um, okay, let's do a little experiment here. All right, left hand is Seep, right hand is Ravager. So I'm going to chew through all of my Magicka. Wow, I'm going to have to pick a different spell. All right, what is a good good spell that just chews through all of your Magicka? Blaze Bolt, that'll do it. Oh yeah, that has a magicka cost of zero. That very much stretches the bounds of overpoweredness. Big time. Oh, okay, so you're draining health, magicka, and stamina. Wow. Why would that have a magicka cost of zero? And it's a channel. Ah, whoo. Okay, when I learn how to mod, I might actually need to apply a actual Magicka cost to this spell. Although, I don't know, maybe the modder thought it was kind of a moot point, because, I mean, if you're already draining 37 Magicka per second, then even a Magicka cost of like 20 per second or 30 per second wouldn't really st stop you, because you would regenerate that much just the same way. So, I don't know. Or maybe just once you get to Master Level, you're just going to suck the lives out of the children of Salem before sunrise. I don't know. It does have a pretty small hitbox. Wow. I'm picturing this on a dragon fight. That could be... Huh. Interesting. Okay. That's... Oh, that is definitely master level. No doubt there. That is definitely master level. And it only costs 25 magicka. That boggles my mind. Okay. So, that happened. Last but not least, let's try Eradication. A blood magic spell that blasts an area surrounding the target, forces enemies to the ground. Oh, okay, so is this like blood magic with a knockdown attack? I guess? Abracadabra. Oh! Well, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna need a test dummy that can survive long enough to be knocked down. Uh, sorry, there you go. Oh, yeah, she is definitely knocked down. Cool. Wow, that, man. It's like the modder wanted to fit as many rolls as possible into only eight spells, right? Because you've got your lifesteal. You've got your, your knockdown, right? Your crowd control. You've got your, your uh, single target damage, 75 damage per second. What more could you possibly want? Uh, your ring of ruin for more damage per second. Sanguine Offering to summon an, summon an ally. Transfusion to heal an ally. Like, it's all there. It's, it's a very compact number of spells, but they each, serve, I, they each serve very specific functions that would be really interesting to run through like a pure vampire playthrough. I think that's really interesting that he fleshed out blood magic that deeply. I think that's really cool. Uh, okay, that is it for me tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite Fenderic spell is out of this match. 
Uh, I do like the sanguine offering. I like thematically the, the role-playing idea of giving up your own blood to summon something nasty and powerful. It kind of reminds me of the, the warlocks from World of Warcraft. If I remember correctly, you sometimes give your own HP to create more powerful effects, which can be rough when you're in a fight with someone that's trying to reduce your HP to zero. But hey, if the ally you're summoning is big enough to stay between you and the bad guys, then, I mean, your HP could be a five and you're still good. So, I don't know, to each their own, I guess. But yeah, that is it for me. So feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.